Since September 11th, our national security structure has grown so big that even the defense secretary can't get his head around it. That according to a much-awaited report. Every day across the United States, 854,000 civil servants, military personnel, and private contractors with top security clearances are scanned into offices in about 10,000 locations in 15 cities. In the D.C. area, 33 building complexes are either under construction or they've been built. That's almost three pentagons, or 22 U.S. Capitol buildings. Is this the face of President Eisenhower's military-industrial complex 65 years after the dropping of the nuclear bomb? And is PBS's three-part series on former Secretary of State George P. Schultz, funded by some of the same military contractors he worked for, another part of this same picture. At the very same time, of course, teachers are fighting to keep their jobs. Intelligence without education? Are we losing our minds? Is that part of the point? Later, Diane Ravitch, public education critic turned very concerned booster. But before that, Greg Mitchell, the nation's media fix blogger, right after this. We're all aware that there are three branches of government in the United States. But in response to 9-11, a fourth branch has emerged. It is protected from public scrutiny by extraordinary secrecy. Top secret America. This is a closed community. And since 9-11, it's become even more so. The money spigot was just opened after 9-11, and nobody dared say, I don't think we should be spending that much. It has become so big, and the lines of responsibility are so blurred that even our nation's leaders don't have a handle on it. Where is it? It's being built from coast to coast, hidden within some of America's most familiar cities and neighborhoods. In Colorado, in Nebraska, in Texas, in Florida, in the suburbs of Washington, D.C. Top Secret America includes hundreds of federal departments and agencies operating out of 1,300 facilities around this country. They contract the services of nearly 2,000 companies. In all, more people than live in our nation's capital have top secret security clearance. Greg Mitchell, media fix of The Nation magazine. I thought the fourth branch was supposed to be us, the media. What happened? <laughs> Well, you can even just look at the fact that this uh, gigantic series this week came out nine years after 9-11. Yeah. So, you know, where has uh, the, the, these things have been hidden for this long? Uh, have the media not been asking these questions enough? It took two years for the Post with, you know, the, Dana Priest and William Arkin and all the resources they had, two dozen people working on the series. It still took them two years, and here we are almost nine years after what do you kind of, what, about, what kind of a job do you think they've done? Well, it's terrific. Uh, I mean, obviously, it's still unfolding this week, and everyone's awaiting their reactions. Uh, uh, but it, uh, the, the site itself has, you know, interactive maps. It has a database. It, you know, it, there probably are some people still think it's just another classic, you know, three-part uh, print series. Uh, but it's, it's we really can drill deep uh, into it. Is there one standout fact to me? It was that the defense secretary. Even he says yeah. he can't get his head around it, and someone else says, I'll never live long enough to get briefed on all that's going on. Yeah. Well, it, that, that is kind of shocking. I mean, it's shocking, and it's not shocking, you know, all the revelations about other such things um, yeah, related to the wars in Afghanistan and Iraq and uh, uh, rendition in Guantanamo yeah. and so forth. So it's shocking, and it's not shocking, but still it's, a, it's an incredible uh, development when you look at even just the cost. You know, I think one of the main points of the, the series is that this is costing us an incredible amount of money, and it's, it's uh, anything goes. It's, you want the money, you get it. You want to set up a program, you want to build a complex, you get it. And it seems like uh, you know, everything else in our society now is being uh, potentially squeezed, and yet they have almost carte blanche for, for this stuff. I couldn't have said it better. We'll put a link to the new Washington Post series at our website. Moving on, one of the elements of the story about intelligence is the relationship between private contractors and public spending. Mm -hmm. That takes us right back to George P. Schultz. It's kind of an <laughs> irony that while the Post is doing the investigating it's doing, um, the public broadcasting system right now stands accused of basically carrying water for Schultz. Take a look at the trailer for the new series. It is 1982 and America faces a world of tension and unrest. The single greatest threat remains the Soviet Union. 
Here you had these old men, this decaying infrastructure, but still with the great weapons uh, of war. It was a dangerous time. A lot of uh, suspicion, a lot of hostility. On the simplest issues, no one wanted to yield an inch, a millimeter. Ronald Reagan seeks a leader to steer America's foreign policy. He finds a man of unique experience for these troubled times. His name is George Shultz. You've been writing about this series since before it began, Greg. Uh, it's about George P. Schultz, who former Treasury Secretary for Nixon, Secretary of State for mm -hmm. Ronald Reagan, went out of office, headed up Bechtel. Many people accuse him of working for that military contractor when he was in office, too. Really the key example of the rotating door. The guy went through it so many times, he must right. be dizzy. Talk about this series. Let's start with who the heck funded it. Well, it's, it's, there are a variety of fund, funders, but they include uh, Bechtel and Schwab, other places that uh, uh, Schultz has either worked for or led or been on the boards. And this is, uh, you know, against uh, PBS policy. Uh, you know, PBS has uh, what, they, what they, they don't want documentaries presented where there's sort of a taint or where people can accuse them of bias uh, or that the funders have undue influence. So uh, Michael Gettler, the PBS ombudsman, just came out uh, a few days ago with a report looking into it, and he's, he agreed that it was one of, one of the most over-the-top sort of puffery uh, kind of documentaries. Now that you can say, well, that it, it wasn't necessarily forced on them by the funders, but the, the fact is it's, it's an unusually, let's say, positive uh, three-part uh, epic kind of series, um, and it, it's led to questions about uh, why P PBS in this case, when it has, has denied putting documentaries on the air with the more from more liberal foundations or had funding from more left, leftist type uh, uh, sources, uh, kept them off the air, but they went along with this one. FAIR, the Media Watch Group where I used to work, has, a, has documented this tendency over decades, and they got into a big brawl with PBS over this series. Right. Um, what did you make of PBS's response, the Ombudsman's response, and um, let's talk about whether anything will come out of this. <laughs> Well, it, it, it does add more scrutiny and, and makes it, it, it makes some people you know, think that PBS bends over backwards because of charges of, of liberal bias, that they'll bend over backwards to, you know, to appease the right on such things. You know, people can watch the show themselves and see what they think, but there's no question that the, 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 the funding causes a problem yeah. for it. Uh, One thing they won't see is much mention of the war in Iraq or the role of either Bechtel or George P. Schultz in that war. Uh, I do urge people to go and check out the materials we'll put online that mm -hmm. uh, pertain to the PBS series. But the whole subject, both the things we've discussed today, Greg, bring me to your recent piece in The Nation, which has to do with us, 65 years after the dropping of the nuclear bomb. Right. Is this the face of our new military intelligence complex? Well, it all sort of began then, you know, with the Manhattan Project and the secrecy that came up, uh, came up over that. Um, you know, I wrote a book with Robert J. Lifton that was a few years ago that was really about America's response to the, uh, the Hiroshima and Nagasaki. And the response, at least on the government end, was to institute this sort of national security state put top secrecy that was maybe understandable around the Manhattan Project and then said, well, let's put it here. Let's put it in all sorts of foreign affairs. And, and the same kind of things we see today, you could almost draw a direct line from what started then and the Washington Post series this week with the, the secrecy, the massive funding, the building of complexes, the media kept in the dark, people kept in the dark. So it really all began uh, 65 years ago with the, with the bomb. Greg Mitchell posts a daily blog at thenation.com. We'll link to it at our site, grittv.org.